In 1993, Satoru Nagata published his modified two-stage approach to autologous microchip construction, wherein the label is transposed in the same stage as framework fabrication, including trigger construction and placement. Thus, Nagata's first stage combines the first, second, and final stages of Prentz technique. Indeed, construction of the triggers and enter of trigger notch was a fundamental improvement advanced by Nagata. Briefly, the first stage operation is the fabrication and grafting of the three-dimensional coaster cartridge framework. And the second stage operation is the projection of the reconstructed oracle. Diagram 1, the paper template for the fabrication of a, 3D frame. Diagram 2, the paper template colored black. Diagram 3, the paper template with the skin cover, lateral, 2 mm, medial, 1.5 mm. Diagram 4, the dimensional analyses of a reconstructed oracle. Diagram 5, the proportional analyses of a reconstructed oracle. Diagram 6 and 7, the proportional analyses of an ideal oracle described by Toleth. Diagram 8, Fabrication of the Paper Template for the 3D Frame. Note that there are two illustrations of the tragus, this is to show the individual difference in the width of the Conchal vault and for the vast majority of the cases, the tragus is located on or within the two illustrated tragus. Diagram 9, Fabrication of the Paper Template. A schematic illustration indicating the normal anatomical location of the oracle in reference to the Frankfurt horizontal line, indicated with the letter F. The anatomical position of the tragus is outlined with the use of the transparent film template. Note the red markings of the lateral aspect of the eyebrow and the eye from the opposite normal oracle for precise determination where the oracle is to be reconstructed. So again, the first stage operation is the harvesting of the coastal cartilage, fabrication, and grafting of the three-dimensional framework. Note that the line of incision is 4.5 cm. The costal cartilage is harvested and block, they are completely white in color since the perichondrium is left intact at the site of harvest. Diagram C6, C7, C8 and C9 the costal cartilages harvested for the fabrication of the 3D frame are the 6th, C6, 7th, C7, 8th, C8, and the 9th, C9, costal cartilages. Diagram C, this is the Conchal vault unit of the 3D frame, it is fabricated from the remaining costal cartilage after the fabrication of the base frame units and the tragus unit. There are occasions where the Conchal vault unit is fabricated as two separate units, depending on the size of the remaining costal cartilage. Diagram B, the units for the fabrication of the base frame, these units are fabricated from the 6th and 7th costal cartilages. Diagram D, the trigal unit is fabricated from the largest remaining costal cartilage after the fabrication of the base frame units. Diagram H, this is the cross helices helical rim unit and it is fabricated from the 8th costal cartilage. Diagram A, the superior and inferior cross anti-helix unit which is fabricated from the 9th costal cartilage. 
Diagrams 1 and 2, the base frame units are fixed with 38 gauge stainless steel double armed wire sutures for a sturdy and rigid fixation. Diagram 3, the fabricated base frame. Diagrams 4 and 5, the fixation of the cross helices helical rim unit to the base frame. The head or the proximal region of the cross helicus is fixed to the posterior surface of the base frame and the notch is aligned to the base frame to reinforce the strength of the 3D frame. Wire fixations are placed in 3 mm intervals. Diagram 6, the appearance after the fixation of the cross helicus helical rim unit to the base frame. Diagram 7, the superior and inferior cross anti-helix unit. Diagram 8, the fixation of the superior and inferior cross anti-helix unit, commencing from the superior cross, inferior cross to the anti-helix. Diagram 9, the Kontavalt unit. Diagram 10, the Trigal unit. Diagram 11, the appearance after the fixation of the superior and inferior cross anti-helix unit. Diagram 12. The fixation of the trigal and cone chalavalt units to the 3D frame. The trigal unit is fixed first, followed by the cone chalavalt unit. Diagram 13. Illustrated angle view of the fabricated 3D frame. Diagram 14. Anterior view of the fabricated 3D frame. Diagram 15. The anterior view of an actual 3D frame. Diagram 16. The posterior view of the 3D frame. First stage operation, lobule type microtia. Diagram 1, the outline of the oracle to be reconstructed, the anterior incision on the lobule. Diagram 2, the W-shaped incision outline on the posterior surface of the lobule and the mastoid surface. The distal end of the W-shaped incision terminates 5 mm from the plotted outline of the oracle to be reconstructed. Diagram 3, the foreskin flaps formed. The anterior and posterior skin flaps of the lobule, the anterior skin flap of the tragus and the mastoid skin flap. Diagram 4, the remnant auricular cartilage is completely removed and the soft tissue corresponding to the region of the auditory canal is excised to expose the periosteum. The periosteum is incised in a semicircular fashion, sutured to the soft tissue of the parotid gland side in the form like a hinge flap to expose the temporal bone and then deepened with a burr. Diagram 5, the construction of the skin pocket, note that the undermining procedure extends 1 cm beyond the outline area of the oracle. Diagram 6, the cone-shaped lining of the incisoria inner tragica is constructed. Diagram 7 and that the inferior half of the posterior skin flap of the lobule and part of the mastoid skin flap are preserved to form the subcutaneous pedicle. Diagram 8, 9. 10 and 11. The 3D frame is inserted under the skin cover from the trickle portion and cantered with the subcutaneous pedicle. Diagram 12. The appearance after insertion of the 3D frame under the skin cover. Diagram 13. Interoperative suction is applied to visualize the contour and to adjust the skin cover over the 3D frame after suturing of the skin flaps. The excessive skin at the incisoria intertragica is excised in a semicircular fashion to obtain the smooth U-shaped configuration of the inner tragic notch. Diagram 14, the excessive skin, remnant ear, in the anterior helical region is excised and the suction is to be removed. Diagrams 15, 16 and 17, bolster sutures are placed in the indentations and around the helical rim of the reconstructed oracle. It is safe to place bolster sutures, due to sufficient enamel skin surface area to cover the grafted 3D frame. Diagram 18, rest and foam sponge is cut out to surround the reconstructed oracle to provide protection. Diagram 19, the illustrated appearance of the patient after the first stage auricular reconstruction operation.
the reconstructed plastic surgeon must project the reconstructed oracle so that the angles of the projection of both oracles are identical in unilateral cases. For bilateral cases, the angle of projection should approximate the average angle of projection, which is 30 degrees. Illustration of the second stage operation, auricular projection. Diagram 1. The spindle sheep outline is for the harvesting of the ultra-delicate split-thickness scalp skin, uds, and the outline along the helical rim is for the release of the reconstructed oracle. The zigzag outline is the incision outline for the elevation of the tempora parietal fascia flap, TPF, with the superficial temporal artery plotted. Diagrams 2 and 3, the method of harvesting the uds to the scalpel. Diagram 4, 5, 6, 7, for the release of the reconstructed oracle, the area immediately adjacent to the helical rim which penetrates into the hair-bearing skin is elevated in the same manner as the uds to the distance of 4 mm from the margin of the reconstructed oracle. The skin of the temporal and mastoid surfaces is undermined. The release of the reconstructed oracle from the side of the head. Diagram 8. The TPF is passed through the skin tunnel and the site of elevation is closed. The cartilage block construct is fixed to the posterior surface of the 3D frame and to the temporal and mastoid surfaces. Diagram 9. The TPF covers the exposed helical rim, the posterior surface of the reconstructed oracle, the cartilage block and the temporal and mastoid surfaces. Diagram 10. The skin of the temporal and mastoid surfaces is approximated and the excessive skin is excised in a triangular configuration in the hair-bearing skin to avoid dog hair formation. Diagram 11. The exposed surface is covered with the uds. Diagram 12. The tie-over is performed to keep the uds in contact to the TPF.